Through the Afternoon with Katie Martin on BBC Radio Solent. So when was the last time you were in a kebab shop after midnight, say, at the weekend? How would you describe it? A bit of an experience? Maybe a bit of a nightmare? Well, it's the inspiration behind a Sweeney Todd-style thriller called K-Shop by local film director Dan Pringle from Bournemouth. Hiya, Dan. Hi, how's it going? Very well. Great to see you here. This sounds like um, a really interesting twist on a story we maybe feel as though we already know. Uh, Tell us a little bit about how you came to write and make a film about a kebab shop. Yeah, well... um... Yeah, well, I've been I've been living in Bournemouth now for ten years. I came down for uni and I did the kind of junk student thing, so I got those years under my belt and kind of experienced nightlife from from sort of any conventional British, um, you know, early twenties perspective. Um, and then um, and then I started up the, the film company with my my business partner Adam in in Bournemouth, and um, we our offices. Uh, were in um, Bournemouth Town Centre on St Peter's Road, which I think had, at one point, had the most nightclubs per, per, per square mile of anywhere in the country. And, um, yeah, just night after night after night, um, we'd be working quite late. We work on commercials, so, we, you know, we work all hours of the day and night. And um, we would sort of constantly see the nightlife unfolding from a sober perspective from mm. our offices uh, down on the street below. And um, yeah, just just after a period of time, you started to see things from a from a very different perspective to to just kind of the usual going out and boozing yourself. You, well, actually looking down on something yeah, as physically, well. Yeah, yeah. It does give you a different perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think it was that you know. It, at first, it was you know. At first, it's just funny. It's just funny seeing people behaving like this. It's like turning on the television, having these you know. We had these massive windows that looked down onto the street, and you know, it wasn't just Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. It was every night of the week. Um, but after a period of time, you started to ask questions of like, you know, how, how has this become so normalised? How has it, you know, how have we become, as a society, so accepting of this constant behaviour? And it was, it was crazy. I mean, it was just, it was just constant carnage. It's the only way to describe it. Um, I wish I could be. I wish I could be kind of subtle and, and, and be kind of diplomatic in the way you, you kind of talk about it, but it is just complete carnage. There's, there's no other way to describe it. Well, once upon a time, you might have been paralytic on your 21st birthday, for instance, or maybe your stag do or your hen do or something like that. Whereas now it does seem, and it's been quite a while since I've been out on a Saturday night, I'll be honest with you, but it does seem now as though if you're out past a certain point... Things go from being merry and everyone having a great time to, as you say, being a bit like a war zone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a complete conflict area. Like, and um, you know, and and that was kind of one thing that I found fascinating. Obviously, as a, coming coming at it from a filmmaker's perspective, was that it's so underrepresented on screen, on television, and cinema. This what is an incredibly dramatic environment where people are where where people are behaving so excessively. Yet we don't we don't explore that. It, you know, it's a fantastic setting because it's just full of drama, and it's and, and it is, and yeah, as a society, we have become so. I don't know, desensitised that it, it's just not a problem and using alcohol as a coping mechanism for sort of getting through our, our working week or getting through our, you know, the, the pressures or stresses of our student lives or whatever it may be, our go-to is alcohol and um, we haven't really asked any questions on the journey to becoming completely and utterly reliant on that as a way of letting off steam. And after alcohol and a skinful of it comes maybe a trip to the kebab shop for um well my husband told me that once upon a time he favored a dish called gandhi's revenge which is apparently <laughs> chips donami and curry sauce beautiful. which is horrendous isn't absolutely it absolutely beautiful I could, honestly if you if i had to if i had to eat because i was starving i still think i might turn my nose up <laughs> Meat. Yeah, I've I've never I can't say I've ever been that that enticed by a lamb donna even prior to making this film, but I certainly I certainly wouldn't go anywhere near it these days, not after the back of kind of making this and going through the process of making kebabs with various things and kind of seeing what the um the freedom you have to uh combine ingredients together. Because your your research involved actually working behind the counter in a kebab shop. Yeah, so, I mean, early on, we re- realised, OK, look, you have this incredibly dramatic environment, which is British nightlife, and let's make a film which explores this, and, and there's just so much room for narrative, there's so much room for excitement and drama. Um, and it was like, what, you know, is it a taxi driver? Is it a police officer? Is it a paramedic? Who is it? And it was like, well, 
it's the kebab shop. It's got to be the kebab shop owner because this is somebody who experiences the worst of it. Mm. And of course, it's fascinating uh, when you start exploring it because these are guys that come from alien cultures. They come from a very, very different place. You know, 99% of kebab shop owners are are um, uh, have come from abroad and, and 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 have different cultural tendencies. So seeing it from their perspective and exploring how they see it gave us this fantastic platform to explore the culture from a very different perspective. What was it like for you then, seeing it from the other side of the counter? Was it was it what you expected it to be? Um, no, it was ten times worse. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, it was. I mean, I was I was absolutely stunned, um, stunned by. It. I did I did a couple of nights uh, with a with a amazing amazing group of guys that run a kebab shop day in day out in um, in Lansdowne in Bournemouth and, and so accommodating. And um, the thing that, that struck me was how numb to it they had become. And the idea that it was, if you wanted to run a kebab shop and you wanted to make money as part of, you know, in and amongst the nighttime economy, then that was what you had to endure. And we're talking about just literally wave after wave after wave of insults and crime and, um, you know, assaults and vandalism. It, and, and on the night I was there, it was just constant. It was just, it to was the just staff absolutely constant. Or to, to each other amongst was, the punters? Uh, from punters to staff. Um, and 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 the way they de- the way they dealt with it was so diplomatic, and they were so um, they, I mean like again they, they're so numb to it that it didn't have any they didn't see anything they didn't take anything personally, which I found absolutely fascinating. Which again, you know, obviously ironically, in K shop the kebab shop owner is a vigilante who's had enough and he can't handle it. But I I have to stress that these guys are incredibly diplomatic. Yeah. You know, they they they're almost like A class negotiators, diplomats in the way they they deal with these these highly intoxicated punters that come in and, 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 and we're, we're part of it I'm part you know, I, I, you know, I, I, you know I've, I've been a part of that culture and you, you don't realise it but when you see it the constant barrage of insults and disrespect that they get and it can be as simple it can be things as simple as just food getting chucked around or people not respecting their food yeah. or lobbing it or throwing it behind the counter or throwing stuff at windows all the way up to people just being incredibly racist or smashing things up or getting into fights oh, how embarrassing and like all, cringing yeah, yeah and it all just becomes quite existential and and when you when you elevate yourself from this and look down on it philosophically it's it's really trivial and pointless so your main character then is does he go a bit a bit taxi driver a bit falling down does he just decide those are those are great references had enough yeah they are they're they're bang on It, it is that it's the guy who's just been pushed right to the very edge of society um, you know, financially, personally, emotionally. Clearing up the film. And he just can't handle it anymore. And at the very beginning of the film, his dad is actually killed by punters, which, you know, is, again, is based on, on various other incidences that I'd heard of, of, of incidents on Nights Out. Um, and, you know, he tries to endure and tries to endure and, and maintain his composure, but eventually he just has enough and he snaps and he, he becomes this, this Batman vigilante character and goes around cleaning up the streets of, of, of drunk filth, yeah. Now, is it obvious when you're watching the film that it's Bournemouth? No, no. We we made a very we made a very um, clear decision early on to make a film that was representative of British nightlife on the whole and and, and Western nightlife. It's relatable from people from all over all over Western countries, from Australia, Canada, America. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we we decided we didn't want to make it anything geographically specific. It's 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 representative of any town centre up and down the country on a Friday, Saturday night. You know, the, the, it's the same culture wherever you go. It's the same extremes and excesses and and the way the way the behaviour and the way the night the nights unfold is is exactly the same wherever you go, any town centre up and down the country. So no, it's it's you, if you're from the region, you'll recognise elements of it, and it is pitched as a as a seaside resort so there's this added element of stag do culture and hen do culture and people coming down to exploit the town and use it dumping it and then disappear again and um, but no there's no references to the fact it's Bournemouth whatsoever and for those who who obviously know that the film has been made here on the south coast uh, have you had any have you had any opposition to the subject or the fact that you are that you are shining a light on this topic? Yeah, plenty. Yeah, no, actually, there's been, there's been some quite hostile um, reaction to the fact the film has been made. Um, there are people that are just really, really, really not happy about it whatsoever um, because, of course... You know, it's it's we don't pull any punches. Like it is a complete and utter honest account of kind of how a night 
you know of how nightlife is and 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 what's an all kind of expose on on that culture and yeah you know some of it is high end and some of it is accentuated but, but at the same time you're not saying it's a documentary are you no no it is a narrative piece of work you know it's completely fictional but you know at the same time you know i'm not i'm not holding back in terms of saying you know oh you know it's just a film about this i am saying you know this is an opportunity for us to maybe just reflect a little bit on kind of our culture and and maybe you know i'm not i you know i'm not being i, I don't want to be hypocritical because i like a drink as much as the next person but it's just about you know at what point did this these extremes of this behavior become acceptable and the film is and film my personal position as a filmmaker is that film is a fantastic platform for starting that conversation but yeah there has been a lot of resentment there has been a lot of people that aren't happy about the fact the film's been made and as a filmmaker though are you quite happy about that do you want there to be you know that my producer adam is extremely happy about that, that because tension. yeah there's plenty of publicity and there's plenty of pr opportunities to to wangle out of that but no i'm not I, you know for me i'm not interested in in kind of stirring up controversy for controversy's sake if there's something which is controversial it's controversial for a reason so that means that we're doing the right thing it's worth exploring if if you if you if you're going against the grain you're asking questions of of why something's become acceptable then ultimately if people are getting worried about that and that's what you're striving to try and achieve so we're obviously doing something right so now i'm absolutely happy to have conversations with anybody who wants to argue about it and you know there's there's also been you know parts of the kebab shop community in the uk that are like you know we're not happy about this and it's like guys you know Tack when you know when Scorsese made Taxi Driver did you know was there a was there a backlash on the taxi driving community? Of course it wasn't. Like let's not let's not get out of let's not get above our stature here mm. of what this film's going to achieve. I, I sure as hell don't think it's going to put an end to kebab shop um, trade in the in the UK. So um, so no, I, you but know. But hopefully it might make people consider how they behave late at night. I think it's you know. Let's be realistic, you know, you're not going to wholeheartedly change somebody's value system or kind of, you're not going to wholeheartedly change the way somebody wants to behave. We're not going to completely and utterly take alcohol off of the agenda. Like, you know, we, we all like a drink. It's part of it's ingrained into our society. But yeah, it, it's the idea that maybe just at the back of your head when you're on that fourth or fifth pint and you're thinking about getting the sixth pint or you're in the kebab shop and you're thinking about kicking off, it's just this little element in the back of your head which is like, maybe I'll hold back this one time. Like, that's the best you can hope for, I think, really. Dan, it's really nice to meet you and I wish you the very best of luck with K-Shop. Filmmaker Dan Pringle from Bournemouth joining you on BBC Radio Solent. You can see the trailer for the film on BBC Radio Solent's Facebook page. Mm-hmm.